All right. Anything else to repeat this? Yes. So in 3.7, we're talking about TCP congestion control. And what we're going to see is that it uses something called an additive increase as it increases the congestion window and a mul multiplicative decrease when it reduces the size of the congestion window as it uh, basically uh, incurs loss, okay? So in general, all right, The idea here is that we continue to increase the transmission rate, namely the size of the window that TCP is using, and trying to figure out what is the usable bandwidth until we reach a point where we have loss, namely we either run into a timeout situation or we start uh, receiving an excessive number of acknowledgments, okay? Right. So when we talk about an additive increase, okay, what they're suggesting is that we increase the congestion window by one MSS every RTT until a loss is detected, okay? Right. And then in the event that um, we detect the loss, then we do a multiplicative decrease on the congestion window by half. So we divide the, uh, the congestion window in half. And what you end up having is this almost, uh, this sawtooth pattern that you see in the diagram down below. Now you'll notice on the, the diagram on the left-hand side, we have our congestion window size, okay? And then on uh, the bottom, we have uh, our time function, okay? Some of his other diagrams um, get a little confused and he's got them mislabeled. But if you look in the book, uh, the window size is always on the left-hand side. Okay, so. I in don't detail, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think for three, seven, he wants us to know slow shock, congestion of bullying, fast recovery, and, and something in the book, figure 3.53 for 3.7. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're talking about 3.7, but you keep going back and talking about 3.53. 3.53 is the figure in the book on page 276. This diagram here? Um, it's chapter three in version in the in the sixth version. It's page two seventy six. What is the figure number? Three point five three. Three point five three. Okay, hold on. That's the figure number. It's not like three twenty seven. That's the that's the figure number three point five three. No, figure numbers are three dot a number, not three point five three. It's three dot three fifty three. Three fifty three. Okay. All right. That that's what he's referring to, and he also wants us to know congestion avoidance and fast recovery, and I six. All right. Okay, at 3.5.5, I've got flow control. What do you, you, you got to give me a, a, be, a better clue as to what diagram he's talking about. 3.53. It's an evolution of TCP congestion window. Okay. Tahu right. and Ren. And All, right. All right, great. All right. All right.
Okay, so this diagram right here that we're looking at on our screen then is 3.53. Yeah. You agree? Yes. All right. And he wants us to know that. Yes. All right. Very good. <clears throat> All right. So anyhow, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so it's difficult because we, uh, there is no gradient here on the, uh, on the time scale. There's no scale on the time side. So I'm assuming that this is like one MS S here and then what happens is we have a loss and we drop back down where we cut it by half so you you'll notice that we're reaching up to 16 kilobytes okay and then all of a sudden we drop back down to 8 kilobytes then we reach up again all right over time to a point where we're at like 20 and then it drops us back down to 10 because it probably incurs loss and then it starts climbing again. So what it keeps doing is it's, as it says here, it's probing for the best bandwidth. And that's why you've got this sawtooth motion here, okay? Right. And some of the other diagrams, I, I think they're a little clearer, but let's go through this slide first. So anyway, the sender limits the transmission, and what they do is the last byte sent minus the last byte acknowledge uh, needs to be less than or equal to the congestion window. So roughly, the rate is equal to the congestion window over the RTT in bytes per second. And again, the congestion window is a dynamic um, size, okay, because as congestion appears and disappears within the network, um, this is going to uh, basically go up and down. So the function um, of the perceived network congestion, okay? So again, uh, the congestion window is dynamic and it's going to be based on how the sender perceives network congestion. And network congestion is based on lost event, a timeout or three acknowledgements and the sender reduces the rate of the congestion window after the loss event, okay? Right. And, it, and it reduces the congestion window by half, okay? So we have three mechanisms, okay? We got the uh, additive uh, increase and the multiplicative uh, decrease. Then we have slow start and we have conservative after timeout events. Okay, so let's take a look at, at these. So slow start. When we start the connection, we start a connection window with one MSS. So an example of uh, MSS is 500 uh, bytes, okay? And the uh, RTT is 200 milliseconds. The initial rate is 20 kilobits per second. The available bandwidth may be, let's say, the MSS uh, divided by the RTT. And this provides a desirable, uh, desirable to quickly ramp up to a respectable level. So what it does is the connection begins and then increases the rate exponentially fast until the first loss event. So again, we start out slow, but we ramp it up really quick exponentially. As we can see in this diagram, okay, it sends one segment and that works fine. So exponentially, it doubles it. It sends two seg segments and that works fine. Now it, it doubles it again. It sends four segments and that appears to work fine. So as you can see, it's, a, it's exponentially increasing um, its rate until it hits a loss. And what, is a, what does it uh, contribute as a loss? How does it define a loss, Sam? It's when it's when it's, it's when it drops. 
It's when two things happen, okay? Either we have a timeout, okay? Or we were, we receive three duplicate acknowledgments. Let's go back to this slide. Again, a loss event is equal to a timeout or three duplicate acknowledgments. All right? So when the connection begins, we increase the rate exponentially until the first loss. We double the congestion window every RTT, and you can see that. Here's one, then two, then four. So we're going up exponentially, right? Yeah. So we double the uh, uh, congestion window every RTT, done by incrementing the congestion window for every acknowledgement received. So in summary, the initial rate is slow, but it ramps up exponentially fast. Do you get that? Right, right. So it goes fast each time? Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> provided this works, you, this down here works, what is, uh, what is host A going to send next? It's going to send... How big is the window going to be? Six. How much? So we have to add two. So we add six. We're going to send six of them. Ah, we're going to send four. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not uh, we're going to send eight, Sam. Watch. One, two, four, eight. Okay. One, two, four, and eight. How it doubles each time. It doubles. Okay. First time around, it's one. Then we double it. That gives us two. Then we double the two. That gives us four. Then we double four. Two times four is eight. Wait. And then after eight, it goes to sixteen. And then after six, and then when we have a timeout, it that has to a, be. Okay, go ahead. What happens when we have a timeout? It resends it again. Well, yeah, it's going to have to resend it, but what does it do to the congestion window in the event of a timeout? It uses all the. It cuts the congestion window by half. Right. Okay. Right. And, cuts we, it by half. and we see that um where did that where did we have yes. Okay. So duplicate yeah. <laughs> multiplicative decrease, we cut the window in half after a loss, okay? Right. All right. So refinement. This what they're talking about here is what happens when we have a loss. Okay. How do we how do we then recover from the loss? So <laughs> what occurs is question. When should the exponential increase switch to linear? Okay. So we've been you know, basically increasing exponentially, and that's what you see here. We start with one, then two, then four, then eight, okay? And then notice what happens. It starts going linear, almost uh, a one-to-one. -one. So in the next move, we, we go up one and over one. Okay, so do you see how it's like a, a what is that, a, a, a slope of... Uh, almost like a slope of two, right? okay? But it's no longer going exponentially. You see that? It's going linear because it gets one half of the value before timeout. Right, okay? When the congestion window gets to half of its value before the timeout, then we start going in a linear fashion. Okay, very good. Okay, implementation, a variable threshold. So the, the threshold is going to be moving, okay, as we go. At a loss event, the threshold is set to one half of the congestion window just before the loss event, okay? Mm -hmm. So one half of the congestion window, here we have 12, okay? And we have a loss event right here. 
Yeah. So one half of that is six. So the threshold is now reestablished at six. And again, we do that. Um, we do that exponential growth. And then once it hits the threshold, then it's linear. Right. Okay. Okay. But when it, when, how about when it loses the acknowledgement, then... It well, it's, it's the loss of acknowledgement or it's a timeout. Right. A loss event can be one or the other. Either it's a timeout situation or we've got three duplicate acknowledgements. All right. All right. Okay, good. So, refinement, inferring loss. So, how do we determine when we have loss? Again, after three duplicate acknowledgments, the congestion window is cut in half. The window then grows linearly. But after a timeout event, the congestion window instead is set to one MSS. The window then grows exponentially, okay, to a threshold, and then from there grows linearly. And we saw that back in this diagram here. Right. <clears throat> so based on this graph, okay, was this a timeout situation or was it uh, three duplicate uh, three duplicate acknowledgements? That was a timeout. That was a timeout. Why? Explain it to me. Because, because it got linear before it gets to one half of the timer. Because no, no because it was um, it was set to a, an MSS of one, right here. See, notice after a timeout event, the congestion window instead is set to one MSS, then grows exponentially, th and then hits the threshold and grows linearly. So here we are, okay, we've got the error, we, uh, we have a timeout, and you can see it cuts us down to one MSS. Then we grow exponentially to the threshold, and then we grow linearly. So this was a timeout, not three duplicate um, acknowledgments. Right. Okay, very good. All right. <laughs> So anyway, um, what this is telling us is that if we see three duplicate acknowledgements, this indicates the network capable of de delivering uh, some segments. A timeout indicates a more alarming congestion scenario. So timeouts are a more serious loss event than three duplicate acknowledgements. Okay? All right. So in summary, when the congestion window is below the threshold, the sender is in a slow start phase and the window grows exponentially. And this is the stuff you really have to remember, Sam. When the congestion window is above the threshold, the sender is in a congestion avoidance phase and the window grows linearly. When a third, a triple duplicate acknowledgement occurs, the threshold is set to one half of the congestion window and the congestion window set to the threshold, okay? Right. When a timeout occurs, the threshold is set to the congestion window divided by two and the congestion window is set to one MSS. This is really what you need to answer right here, Sam. Okay, you need to memorize that. Okay. All right. And again, they summarize all of that in this here as well. Okay. Okay. Now, did he... I don't think he wanted us to go through this, TCP fairness and so on. No, he doesn't want us to go over this. No. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, very good. All you, all you want us to know is the fast recovery. And that's it. You right, right. Okay, very good. Very good. All right. Excellent. Ugh. Sorry, Sam. I take this cold medicine and I take the Dayquil stuff, you know, the non drowsy stuff. Great. And it still makes me sleepy. Yeah. So I, I apologize. Um, all right. What should we uh, go over next? Um, can we go over in chapter five? Um, a day in a life. Oh yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Let's do that. <clears throat> One second. Can we do something similar today in the life to make it more understandable? Um, we can. Um, I think we just need to just walk it through slowly. Um, yeah. <clears throat> One second. Okay, chapter five. No, that's not what I want. I'm looking for that. Hold on. And did you post a video from yesterday? Yeah, I've got yeah. it coming up now. <sighs> All right, so here we go. Yeah, I, I don't think I received the video from yesterday. No, you did not. You did not, Sam. I've, I actually... Uh, it's in the process of being downloaded now, and then once it gets downloaded, then I'm going to upload it to uh, YouTube. Okay, so they're both down. Give me a moment. Let me get into uh, YouTube and uh, upload these. Okay. Can you also upload the pictures and notes with it? The pictures. What pictures? It's the one that we did for the prob the problems that we did that, that yesterday. I thought I did that. Let's check. Okay. I thought I had already done that because I saved them right to uh, your Sam folder. Okay. You take a look at that while I'm uh, getting into YouTube and uploading these. Okay. Yeah. What did you call that? 
Um, I'm going to have to go back and look. Okay, those videos are in the process of being uploaded now. <clears throat> Let's look for the name of those files. So it's called um, ARP Demonstration Example 2. ARP Demonstration Example 2? Yes. What day was January 14th? Was it January, January 14th? 14th was, I think, Sunday. One second. Did we do DHCP? Yeah. We did DHCP briefly, yes. And did you? So the 14th was Saturday. The 14th was Saturday. Okay. Yeah. And then you and I got together on... Uh, Yesterday, the 17th. Okay. So here are the notes. <clears throat> you see them right here? Got to find PowerPoint. I, I see chapter five PowerPoint. Okay, very good. And and then do we do notes for the DHCP request? No, I don't think we did. <laughs>
Kim Kim Ikorofo a day in the life? Yes. Okay, so here we are, day in the life. So the whole idea is that we're going to send a very simple web request out to um, a server, okay? Right. And that server's name is, it's going to be Google, and it's going to be lo uh, the web server located at 64-233-169-105. And they don't give us the actual domain name for it, but um, that's fine. We have a laptop that's located at the at school at Temple. Okay. Like we have a laptop. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. So the laptop's going to start out by typing in www.google.com. Okay? Right. And that's that is an HTTP request, okay? Right. And in order to accomplish that request, okay? What do you think the first thing is that the laptop's got to do? It gets to, it needs to know the IP address and after it's the first top router and it okay, needs to know. All right. So hold up, hold up. So the first thing it needs to do is it needs to get the IP address for Google.com, correct? Right. How is it going to do that? It's gonna send a request. It's going to send it's gonna to to see it's gonna do an ICMP ping. Why is it going to do an ICMP ping? Don't jump. You're you're jumping here, okay? The first thing it needs to do is it needs to get the IP address for Google.com. How does it do that? Tell me the protocol that it uses to do that. It uses a pink voucher. No. Remember, yesterday we were just pinging to exercise the network, okay? We we're using ping as an exercise. That's not something that normally happens, okay? Although ARP is something we definitely are going to need to talk about. But first, how does the browser get the IP address for Google.com? It to see if the IP address is in Google.com. Yeah, but how does it do that, Sam? What protocol is being used to get that IP address? It's HTTP. It's an HTTP request, but again, another protocol comes into play that allows us to convert our www.google.com into an IP address. What's the protocol?
Protocol is DNS. DNS. What it, tell me what DNS does. DNS checks to see if the computer sends that DNS. What is DNS short for? Domain name server. Okay, or domain name service, okay. And what DNS does is it allows us to get the IP address, okay, for a domain that we want. Now, let me ask a question. Does the network layer, does it use domain names or does it use IP addresses for routing? It use IP addresses for routing. Right, so we have to convert our domain name into an IP address. All right, let's just look at the first slide. So connecting to the laptop needs to get its own IP address, all right? Okay, well, that's, that's good to know, okay? Whenever you see that the laptop needs to get its own IP address, what, what protocol is going to handle getting the laptop its IP address? It's DHCP. Right. So the laptop is going to contact DHCP to get an IP address, the address of the first top router, and the address of the DNS server. Okay? Right. Is this what you're trying to tell me? Yeah, that... that that was what I was trying to. Okay. All right. I apologize. I misunderstood. All right. So, the laptop's going to generate a DHCP request, and it encapsulates that into a UDP. And at the UDP, uh, UDP, what do we call that? What's the what's the PDU? What's the name of the PDU? Is that a a frame, a segment, or a packet? into a UDP segment. Very good. And then the UDP segment is encapsulated into an IP what? IP address. No, into an IP I protocol. No, what do we call the uh the PDU for in the network layer? It's the It's for the protocol data unit, it's in, it's in the data link. No, in, in the network layer, what is the protocol data unit? What do we call it? Is it a frame, a packet, or a segment? It's a frame. No, frame is for our data link layer, okay? So it's encapsulated into an IP packet, then encapsulated into an 802.1 Ethernet frame. The Ethernet frame has a broadcast destination address. Is that an IP address or a MAC address? For for this one, it's 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 running the IP address and. You have to find it, the source MAC address. Okay. This, do you see the uh, destination all Fs here? Yes. Okay. That's the MAC destination MAC address. Okay. We don't know that until it does a broadcast. It's a broadcast. So it does a broadcast on the LAN and it's received at the router running DHCP. Okay? Right. So, <clears throat> what is this here? This what's is that? the router. No, this what's this? What am I pointing to? <clears throat> God bless you. Um, this one is the Ethernet frame. No, no, no. Look at what I'm pointing to. Can you see my arrow? Yes. What am I pointing to? The switch. 
I'm pointing to the switch. Okay, so that's the switch, and down below here is the router, which is also yeah. running DHCP. Okay. Wait. Um, can Can we make the first one a little clearer? Uh, I'm sorry. Which one a little clearer? The five ninety four. Really oh, going back. back here? Oh, okay, okay, fine, yeah. Well, all we're doing, Sam, is we're just giving a general diagram. You've got your laptop with its browser over here. You've got a switch. You've got uh, a router, and that router is then connected to the Comcast network, which is also connected to a DNS server, okay? Right, right. Can we write? Can you write it out a little? Could it, could you write it out a little bit? Yeah, but that's what that's what he's writing here. He's writing it all out for us. Right here is what he's saying. Okay. Right. I'm just reading it. Good. He he's actually walking us right through this this process, and and you just have to uh, just read it and. Uh, and then ask questions that you don't, you know, on parts that you don't understand, okay? Right, right. So anyway, the laptop starts up, and it, it needs to send out a, a DHCP request to the DHCP server, which is this router down here. So it takes that DHCP request, it encapsulates it into a UDP segment, then encapsulates it into an IP packet, then encapsulates it into a, an Ethernet frame. That Ethernet frame has a broadcast destination address of all Fs, okay? And it broadcasts it out, and it's received at the router running the DHCP server, which is this router right here, okay? Right. So the Ethernet, the data link layer, demuxes, okay, pulls apart the Ethernet frame, passes up the packet to IP, which demuxes it, and then passes it up to UDP, which demuxes it again, and passes it to the application layer where DHCP is running. All right. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, can we, can we do like something, something similar to, to that problem? <coughs> Where are we doing that web requests? It's, uh, it's going to be exactly the same, Sam. It's, it's not, it's not going to change. Okay. Um, the description is still the same. Right. I don't understand. I don't understand what you want me to make different because it, it's not going to be different. This is how it's done. Right. Okay. So. All right. The DHCP server then formulates a DHCP acknowledgement containing the client's IP address the IP address of the first hop router to for the client, the name and the IP address of the DNS server. <coughs> it encapsulates the DHCP, encapsulation of the DHCP server. The frame is forwarded to the switch learning through the LAN and demultiplexed at the, at the client. So what happens is it sends back the DHCP acknowledgement Back to the switch, then back to the laptop. So the DHCP client receives the DHCP acknowledgement. D what is the DHCP client here? The DHCP client is the DHCP client is the, is like you almost said it. It's like a computer. Is the computer. It's the laptop. Okay. And what is the DHCP server in this diagram? The server is the router. Very good. Okay, good. Good, good. All right. So 
the client now has its IP address, knows the name and address of the DNS, and the IP address of the first hop router. Okay? Hmm. All right. One of the things, uh, well, regardless. Okay. So at this point, okay, now we need to do ARP. Before sending the HTTP request, okay, need an IP address for Google.com, which is a DNS, okay? So the DNS query is created, encapsulated into UDP, encapsulated in IP, encapsulated into Ethernet. And in order to send the frame to the router, we need the MAC address of the router's interface. And this is done with ARP. So again, the laptop prepares an ARP query. It broadcasts that out, which is received by the router, which then replies, okay, the router replies giving its MAC address on the router interface. The client receives the ARP reply and now knows the MAC address of the first top router so that it can now send the frame containing the DNS query. So, an IP datagram containing the DNS query is forwarded via the LAN switch from the client to the first top router. Then, the IP datagram is forwarded from the campus network into the Comcast network, and routing uh, routed tables created by RIP or OSPF, ISS, ISIS, and or BGP to the DNS server. So eventually, it goes from this router into the Comcast network over to the DNS server. This is then demuxed by the DNS server. And then the DNS server replies to the client with the IP address of Google.com, which we said earlier was sixty four two thirty three one sixty nine one oh five. Okay. Right. Okay. So now what happens is now we're ready to send the HTTP request asking to open www.google.com. So to send the HTTP request, the client first opens a TCP socket to the web server, right? Right. And we do a TCP SYN segment, okay? So a TCP segment containing a SYN. Step one of the three-way handshake and inter-domain routed to the web server. So that TCP send segment is sent from the laptop, through the switch, through our router, over to Comcast, back to Google, and then finally to the uh, Google server. The web server then responds with a TCP SYN acknowledgement which is step two of the three-way handshake. Finally, the TCP connection is now established. Okay? So, at this point, the HTTP request is sent into a TCP socket. The IP datagram containing the HTTP request is routed to the www.google.com, which is at 64.233.169.105. The web server responds to the HTTP reply with an HTTP reply containing the web page. An IP datagram containing the HTTP reply is routed back to the client. So the reply goes from the server to the router, back to Comcast, back to Temple, back to the laptop. Well, that was that was pretty easy. Okay. And that's that's it, Sam. Uh, um 
I mean, if I were to change this to uh, you sitting at home and uh, reaching out to the Temple uh, uh, University server, the description that we've been going through would still be the same. It's just that the names, instead of Google, it would be Temple. Instead of, uh, you know, the laptop at school, it would be the laptop at home. You know, that that's the only change, though. So that is that the only change that he could do? Yeah, yeah. So if you get to know these these uh, steps, you should be in pretty good shape. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Very good. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Okay. Yeah. Sam, I updated your video links. You remember the document, Sam Video Links? Sam Video Link? Right. It's a document in your Sam's folder. And the, what is 1112? Is that? 1112. Is that, that, that was that, uh, what we did on uh, January 12th. That's those day. Um, I think so. Yes. And then, um, one, one, four, that's what we did on Saturday. And one, one, seven is what we did yesterday. Yeah. Let me check to make sure I have that. Okay. Go ahead. So it's this one. So it'll be Sam video link. 8.15 p.m. Yes. I got it. See if you can play it. Go ahead and try playing it. I'm going to try playing it. Okay, good. Hold on. Tell you what, I'm just going to grab something real quick to, to drink because my throat is getting sore. Okay? Right back. You try those.
Idzie. Okay, Sam. Were you able to look at them? The first one is working. Okay. But when I clicked on the second one, when I click on the second one, it says, if you don't know the video, grant you access, please sign in. Okay, hold on. Um, for all right, try it now. Try it now. Okay. Hey, Jim, all three of these are now working. Okay, very good. Excellent. Yeah, I forgot to hit a publish button. So. All right, good. So we've got those. And then after I'm done this session, I'll do the same for this video tonight. Okay. All right. Sam, uh, when do you start school? Um, I did start school on the 17th, and I did, yeah, I did start school on the 17th. There's no homework. There, there's no homework assigned. Okay, very good. I start school tomorrow night. Yeah, so I started school. I started on the seventeenth. Okay. I don't have any school on Friday. Really? How come? Yeah, because my schedule says comes on Thursday and on Friday I don't have any school on. Oh, okay. You just don't have any classes scheduled for Friday. Well, that's good. Yeah. You get a day off. That's not bad. Yeah. All right. Um. At this yeah. point, I'm <clears throat> I'm wondering if I should prepare a uh, pretest for you to see how you do. Yeah, I mean, I need I did chapter. I'm studying four point five, but I didn't get to chapter three yet. I've been studying four point five and four point six and reviewing all the stuff, but. I'm just trying to get ready for the final exam. I I have 4.1 or I have and I have I'm working on 4.5. So All right. I haven't gotten to the chapter three stuff yet, but I'm almost done studying 4.5 and okay. started 4.6 yet. All right.
Okay, very good. Right. How about chapter uh, chapter five? I didn't get to that yet. Okay. Um, I'm still working on chapter four point five, studying it. I'm, I'm still working with the videos, and I'm working on studying what you put on the video for four point five. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. All right. Um, one second. Okay, then what do we want to work on next? Um, can we work on another, um, can we work on another DHCP problem? <clears throat> yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see what I got here. I also have another computer class in C Sharp, and he was telling me about getting, telling me to get a Cisco certification. Okay. Yeah, my other professor was telling me about, about that, because okay. I was saying... I'm on the program in networking too. That's why I was talking to him. I was you know talking that, to him. You know that's what I teach, right? Yeah. Is the Cisco. The Cisco. That's that that was what he was telling me to do. Take the Cisco exam to get a certification. In fact, you see this program right here? Yeah. This is the Cisco Packet Tracer. This is the simulation program that we use in learning about Cisco. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. hmm. You know, I do my Cisco classes on uh, typically Tuesday nights. Yeah. If you wanted, you could sit in. Yeah, I, I might have yeah. I might have a lot to do with Okay. All right. Your call. You don't have to do it this semester. I mean you can do it later, all right? Yeah, if I so you are okay with me sending in? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. But you could sit you could you it would be your choice. You could either sit in online or you could come over to the community college. It's really up to you. Okay. Okay, so, um, you know, I have a couple of students who basically uh, basically sit in online. Yeah. But you definitely have to get a headset and wear that headset all the time, okay? Okay. <laughs> all righty, so. Um, when's the next time you want to get together? Um, I'll text you tomorrow, tomorrow in the morning or tomorrow in the, uh, in early afternoon. Okay. Is, early, is texting you in the morning or early afternoon okay? Well, I prefer it earlier, okay, simply because as the day gets on, you know, I, I'm, my schedule fills up. So the sooner I find out, the more flexible I'm going to be to say yes to what you want to do, all right? Okay. 
Um, let's see, what do I have here? Um, thought I had a DHCP example. No, that wasn't it. Yeah, I'm going to have to recreate something um, for the DHCP. All right, let's see. I need that other thing. Uh, great, I can't find it.
All right, here's what I need. Okay. <sighs> All right. Okay, that's empty. <clears throat> I think we're ready to go. All right. Um, let me just add one more piece here. All right. And let's set up our uh Okay, we're looking at ARP ICMP. We're going to change that. I want to <coughs> Excuse me. I want to see ARP. I want to see um DHCP. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. Okay, so this first one it starts out with a gratuitous, uh, I think it's a gratuitous, uh, no, this thing's trying to do something else. Let's just uh, clear this. Let's cycle the power. Ah, oh, shoot. Damn it. <laughs> I don't believe I did that. I just wiped out the configuration I just put in. 
Okay, one second. Um, uh, int f zero zero at the address one two one sixty eight. Ten dot one two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. No shut. Exit. IP DHCP pool admin network is one ninety two one sixty eight. Uh, ten dot zero two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero fault router is one ninety two one sixty eight dot ten dot one exit IP DH CP Exclude address is one ninety two one sixty eight one ten dot one. Okay. Do run start. Nope. Do copy run. Start. Okay, good. Now we got it. Let's see where this thing goes. Oh, okay, here it is. This is the problem right here. Okay. All right, so we're going to go back. I'm going to IP config slash renew. That's going to tell the system that it wishes to renew its IP address via uh, TCP IP. And before I do that, let me just uh, check the ARP table. Good. IP config. And slash. No. Okay. Press enter. And it creates this up here. So let's uh, we'll make this disappear. All right, so here we go, Sam. We've got this, uh, the first move. <clears throat> the laptop realizes that it needs to get a an IP address, okay? Right. right. So the DHCP client, namely the laptop, constructs a discover packet and sends it out. So here it is up in the application layer, layer number seven. It then passes that down to the uh, UDP transport layer, and you'll notice the source is 68, the destination is 67. 
The IP source, uh, the source IP address is zero because we don't have one right now. And the destination IP address is 255.255.255.255, which means a broadcast at the IP address la layer. Then we've got a, uh, at our da data link layer, we've got a source of 5EE7, which is our PC, okay? Right. And all Fs, which mean, again, it's a type of broadcast at the, the uh, data link layer, right? Right. All right, so. Um, <clears throat> All right, so it gets sent out, and we say next step. Before it sends, it, it, sends it up to the switch. So what's the switch going to do with it? It's, it's going to check to see if this was MAC addresses in the table. I love it. Thank you very much. And if it, it is in the night. table, then it is. If okay. not, it, it puts it in there. Excellent. Now. What's it going to do next with the packet? It's going to look at the destination address. And what's that destination address going to tell it? It's all S. So it has to broadcast to the router, but it doesn't broadcast back to the laptop because you're not going to send to where we got it from. All right. We... Good. So it uh, sends that off. And we're going to hit next step. And there it goes. And it says it's the router me. receives it. And it updates the table. Well, not quite yet. The router receives it. The frames MAC address matches the receiving or the broadcast, and it's a broadcast. So it decapsulates the PDU on the Ethernet frame and passes it up to the IP layer. The destination IP address is broadcast. The router dispatches the packet to the upper layer. In the transport layer, it decapsulates the PDU and then sends it up to the application layer. So the packet is a DHCP packet. The DHCP server, which is the router, processes, processes it. it. The server uh, received a DHCP discover packet. The server already has an existing binding to this host. So it now says, OK. The DHCP server constructs a DHCP offer packet and broadcasts it out. But the problem is, is that it does not have the MAC address for this. So let's see what it does next. It does an ARP, okay? It does an ARP. And it basically says the source is DD01, which is our router, all Fs. And it basically sends out the source IP as 10.1 and the destination IP as 10.2. Why is it doing this, Sam? There's a very special reason it's doing this. It's doing this because we don't because we don't know the IP address of the first route. We don't know the destination IP address. Yeah, but wait a minute. It's sending out a packet from 192.168.10.1 to the destination IP of 192.168.10.2. Why is it doing that? Because we originally did it to 10.2, but it didn't have 10.2 in there, but we have 10.2 already encapsulated. What's happening is, is the router, okay, DHCP is actually trying to figure out if there is a machine out there that already has the address of 10.2. Right. That's what's occurring here, okay? So next layer, and it sends it out. Okay, fine. So let's go through the simulation, okay? So the ARP message goes out. Let's look at it. 
Okay, and it's received by the frame, or uh, the frame is received by the switch. The switch sees that it's a broadcast and is then, then going to transmit this out, okay, and right. update the table. So let's see if it updated our uh, our MAC table. Uh. There it is. It update. There's the uh, the routers. So it updated the MAC table, which it should do with the source address, right? Right. And now it's going to broadcast it out. And let's see what it does next. It sends it out to uh, laptop zero. Laptop and zero says, "This is not for me." It this looks is not at for me. And it looks at the IP address of 10.2, and it says I'm not 10.2. In fact, I don't even have, I don't even have an IP address yet. In fact, we should get rid of this. I don't even have an IP address, so it stops. Okay. Next, okay. There's another ARP, okay. And again, the ARP source is. 10.1 to the destination 10.2. Okay. Now it's sending out a DHCP response. Okay. Right. And here it goes. Okay. Sends it over to the laptop. Laptop sees this, and in this particular case, let's follow this up. So the DHCP packet, the DHCP client processes it. The DHCP client has received a DHCP offer packet. And if we look at that, okay, What's happening is uh, the server, which is our router over here, our DHCP server is offering up 192.168.10.2. Okay? Right. So what's going to happen now is the client's going to respond. It receives the offer packet, constructs, and sends out a request packet. Okay? That gets sent down, sent down, sent down, sent down, and then finally it gets sent back to the uh, the router. And here we go. There it goes up to the switch. The switch gets it and sends it off to the router. And now this is what the router does with that packet. Basically processes it, sends it up the stack, The packet is a DHCP packet. The server processes it. The server has received a DHCP request packet. The DHCP server already has an existing binding to this host. Okay, that's great. Going on, the DHCP server sends out an acknowledgement to the host. And it comes down and it prepares that and it sends it out. And then we do next. Okay, so here goes the acknowledgement coming back down to the laptop. Now, <laughs> the laptop gets this, okay, and it processes it. And it decapsulated. So, right. So the packet is a DHCP packet again. The client processes it. The client uh, has received a DHCP and acknowledgement packet. The DHCP client receives an acknowledgement packet and sets its IP address configuration. So now when we look at this, we see that the IP address is now set to 10.2. Do you see that? Right. 
Now it's set to 10.2. Correct. So the IP address is now set. Now it's going to send out an ARP request trying to get the MAC address, okay, to 10.1. Or no, 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 I'm sorry. This is a gratuitous request. So a gratuitous ARP request basically is trying to determine a couple of things. Does anybody else have this IP address? No. It also sometimes it's it's done to update switches and servers that are in the network. Okay? But in essence, this is an ARP request where the um the client is sending itself an ARP request. You'll see that the Source address is 192.168.10.2, and the destination is 10.2. But notice the MAC. The MAC says 5EE7 to a broadcast. So again, this is going to go out, goes out to everybody. And what happens is that 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 ARP request is actually going to update, possibly update that switch with respect to um, uh, its MAC address, and then it's going to continue on down to the router. And now what's going to happen is it's going to update the um, the router. Now the router is going to complain, basically saying that the target, the destination IP is for 10.2. The router is not 10.2, so, it drops so it. it's going to drop the frame. Okay. All right. So. Next, and that's it. So that's our DHCP update. Um, like I don't like I don't understand how like how the how this one gets dropped and then how stuff on the router gets dropped. Well, the reason <coughs> the reason this one gets dropped. It's called a gratuitous ARP request, okay? Right. And what does, look? I want you to look up on Google what gratuitous means. A gratuitous ARP request is an address resolution protocol that requests packet where the source and destination IP are both set to the IP of the machine yes. issuing. Yeah. But what does the word gratuitous mean? Gratuitous. Gratuitous means uncalled for, lacking good reason, unwarranted. Okay? Right. So, um, or right, so it's really not needed, but it's more or less a safety, okay? It's just a, uh, it's done as a double check, okay? That That's its only purpose. It's to make sure that no one else, no other PC out there or laptop out there has the address 10.2. That's all it's okay. doing. Okay, and now if we go back and we look at the ARP table for our PC, notice, oh wow, it does not have, uh, I would have thought for sure it had the, uh, the address for, uh, Let's try this. Ping.
Now it'll figure it out. There it is. Okay, good. All right. So this does this make it a little clearer? Um, uh, we did. I, I know we focused on the IP address. I don't. I, I I know. I understand the first part of it, but can we go? Like, like, can we do like? I know this was gratuitous. Can we do like an example where it actually goes to ten dot? Ten dot what? To ten dot one instead of just ten dot two. Okay, I guess I'm not understanding the question because it did go to ten dot one. Yeah, but. Like, I had a little, I understand where, I understand it going forward, and then it does a match, and then it decapsulates it, and then it looks to see if it's the same, but it drops it, and then it straight sends it back to the switch, and the destination MAC address is still not there, it does a broadcast, it does a match, it, and, it, and it drops it, and then... After it drops it, then it checks to see if it matches. And if it matches, it's a check mark. Then we try and send it out again to switch zero. And after we send it to switch zero, if the destination MAC address is not it's still done the nil, and then you send it to the router, and it still doesn't match, then it does a gratuitous request. Don't get caught up on the gratuitous request. Again, the gratuitous request is simply to double check and make sure that no other device, no other host has 10.2. Okay? That's the only reason for that gratuitous request at the very end. Okay, so don't panic about that. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. All right. Well, why don't we uh why don't we uh we'll end this session and I will upload the uh upload this video so that you can go over this part again, okay? Okay. All right. Cool. And then I'm, I'm, yeah, I'll be still working on chapter 4.5 getting this done and 4.6, studying that, and then once I've done 4.6, then I might be running to either Chapter 3 or Chapter 5. All right, very good. You'll let me know tomorrow, okay? Yeah, I'll let you know about tomorrow. All right, excellent. All right. All right, Sam. Then have a good night, and uh, look for this up there shortly, okay? I'll definitely okay. get it up before I go to bed, okay? All right. All right. Have a good night. Thank you, you too. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.